Hello everybody, it's Brett here again from Real Response and what we're going to be going through today is looking at your wound packing. So we're coming to you from our, our warehouse up here in Sydney, so sorry about the mess, um, but today's lesson is going to get a little bit messy with a bit of blood on the floor, so they wouldn't let us up into the boardroom. So last week we touched on tourniquets and we looked at a way we could stop a catastrophic bleed by essentially compressing that artery, those muscles, that tissues against the bone, okay, and switching off that tap. Unfortunately, not all wounds are gonna allow us to put a tourniquet on. So we have to have alternative methods to be able to control that catastrophic hemorrhage. So some common areas that you might find that we're not gonna be able to put a tourniquet on are gonna be your junctional bleeds, okay? So your junctional bleeds usually consist of ones in your groin, up in your armpit, and then up in your neck too. A few of the different items that you might carry in your kit. So your IFAC, depending what pack you want to carry on, whether it's in your backpack, whether it's on your webbing, on your belt. Um, so these are quite large, right? And you can fit quite a few items in there. Um, you can get the smaller ones as well. Anything that essentially that you can put your hemostatic agents into, okay? So the two most commonly ones that are on the market at the moment is your quick clot, used quite commonly by militaries around the world, and your Celox, okay? There are slight differences to the two, but it's really important to know that if you don't have a hemostatic agent, we can still just use normal gauze, all right? So just a normal crepe bandage, all right? And then as well, you can get these, these bandages specifically designed for wound packing, okay? You can see that they are nice and tightly compressed so that you can fit them nicely into your kits and not take up too much room. The biggest difference between the, the quick clot and your Celox is what's impregnated with. All right, so you've got Kaleen, okay, or Kaleen, how you want to pronounce it, right? And that's going to work with the body's clotting factors. So you might find a little bit difficult, especially if your patient is really hypothermic, okay? Or maybe they're on blood thinning medications too. The difference with the, the Celox, so it's impregnated with Chitazan or Chitazan, depending where you come from and how you want to pronounce it. And these work independently to the body's clotting factors. So differently, some benefits. Um, a lot of the studies show that there's not a major difference, all right? But it's just something to be aware of when you're deciding what item you want to carry in your kit. The really good benefits of using a hemostatic impregnated gauze is the way or how quickly that clot is going to form when you start to apply it, as long as you've applied it properly. Just with non-impregnated gauze, so just a normal crepe bandage, or your, your bandage is designed specifically for packing, so still just a normal crepe bandage, but just packaged a little bit differently. All right, those are gonna take a little bit longer, but you can still achieve the same goal. So please don't just think if you don't have hemostatic agents, we can't pack a wound, definitely grab out your gauze and start packing that wound properly, which we're gonna go through very, very shortly. Moving on to wound packing and how we're actually going to do it. So we've come across our wound and you can see that there's actively bleeding that's coming out of it. All right. It's up in your groin, so we can't put a tourniquet on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in and we need to apply digital pressure and find where that bleed is coming from to make sure we can stop it before we start to pack. So from here, if the wound is big enough, it's filled up, there's blood pooling around the area. We're going to open it up and we're going to scoop some of that blood out and we're physically gonna be looking to see where that bleed is coming from. So essentially looking for like a little fountain spraying underneath the water, visibly having a look to see what we can find and then putting our finger directly on top of that. So right now I've got digital pressure on that artery, which has stopped that bleeding momentarily. Obviously, depending on the environment you're working in, it's not gonna be feasible for me to sit here and keep my finger on that artery. So what I need to do is I need to start to pack that wound. So I'm keeping pressure applied to that artery. My buddy, whoever's around, the patient, I'm getting my quick clot or my hemostatic agent or just my normal gauze to start packing. If you haven't already done so, if you've pre-packaged your gauze, just making sure you've got some tears in there, that's gonna make it a lot easier to rip some little courtesy tabs, all right? So from there, pulling it open, keeping digital pressure on there and we're going to start to pull that gauze out. Now you can rip the whole lot out and then start to pack or you can keep it in the packet and just start pulling it out. It is going to be in a Z fold 
so it's a lot easier to pull out. So you can see it's just going to slowly start to pull. All right now from there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on the tip of my index finger like so, and I'm going to start replacing my fingers and leaving the gauze in that location. So keeping active pressure on here. All right, I'm going to grab the tip of that finger and I'm going to slide it in and put it where my last finger was keeping active pressure with that finger I've replaced it which now has that gauze. Now from here I'm going to start pulling that out and just follow that whole process until all that gauze is gone and that whole wound is completely packed. Keeping pressure directed in the way of where that bleed is coming from. little blue strip you see so that is allowing so when the patient goes for an x-ray they can actually see so it's a radio opaque line not they can see where the gauze is actually in there so that clot is going to start to form where that bleed is coming from so I don't actually have my finger on there anymore but when I'm replacing my finger with the gauze the pressure is directed in the way of where that bleed is coming from. Please don't try and push pressure anywhere else around that wound. We're going all the way back until that wound is completely filled up. So you can see here, there's a lot of space to fill up. We wanna make sure that whole area is nice and tight and compact. Because unfortunately, when we start to move our patient, if you're putting splints on, the tissue, the muscle, that's all gonna shift, which can all affect that clot and it might cause it to blow or move, causing that patient to bleed again. So it's really important that when we're doing this packing, that we're physically and visibly looking to make sure there's no blood pooling from underneath. Right? If we can see blood pooling from underneath, that's gonna indicate that we've missed that artery and it's gonna to continue to bleed. So even though that wound is now completely full, I'm still packing around the edges there to make sure that that gauze cannot slip into those spaces around the area. Once you've done that, we're keeping active pressure on there. All right. Now, if you're happy or if you do have some other material around, so if you do have just a normal gauze, open it up. And you don't need to take the bandage out. What we can do is we can just place that straight on top and put some more pressure down there. All right, trying to keep that pressure directed to where that wound is. Okay, well, sorry, where the bleed is coming from. And we want to hold it there for a minimum of three minutes. Okay, now if your patient is able and willing, we can get them to do it while we start to get our other bandages ready to wrap it up. All right, because again, we can't just sit here with our fingers in the wound forever. We wanna be able to move our patient as well as keeping everything nice and tightly compact, all right? At that end of that three minutes, all right? If you're happy you can't see any pooling coming from underneath, we can just ever so gently just pull the sides of that wound outwards. And again, we're just making sure that we haven't missed any bleeding coming from underneath. Please, if you see active bleeding coming up from underneath, that wound is still bleeding. So we need to make sure that we go back and we rectify that problem. Yeah. By just shoving more gauze on top, okay? It just means that we're applying pressure to the area. We're not applying direct pressure to where that artery is bleeding from, all right? Quick clot gauze, what we just packed with. All right, so really good bit of kit. Um, really highly recommended to carry it. They are quite expensive. And they do have an expiry date, but again, it's a life-saving tool to have around in your kit. For whatever reason, if you don't have the budget to be able to buy a quick clot or Cellox, we can just carry, carry sorry, just some normal packing bandages. So again, just a normal crate bandage is fine, but as well, you have some specifically designed bandages too. So the benefits of these ones is it's in that Z fold, so it's quite easy to pull out, all right? If you don't have one with the Z fold, if you just improvising with your crepe bandage. A really good little trick is just to pull in from the center. Okay, pull upwards. And you keep everything nice and tacked. And then what we do there is we can hold that 
put it under our arm and we can start packing and feeding it out, making sure that it's not going to be in the dirt, in the blood, okay, soaking that bandage. All right? Although we're not too concerned about an infection, all right, but what we want to make sure is that we're not dropping all this bandage in a big pool of blood and it's completely soaked before it gets a chance to, um, to get into the wound. All right? Again, if you can't remember to do that, just like you did with the, um, the quick clot, we just put it on the edge of our finger and that same technique applies. With your compressed gauze or specifically design gauze, again, it's got a little pull tab on there. So if you are cry packing these um, in your workplace to replicate these with just normal crepe bandages, just make sure you put some courtesy tabs in there because when your hands are a little bit bloody, a little bit sweaty, it's gonna be quite hard to rip and pull that, especially if you're in a stressful environment. So a little courtesy tab, you're gonna open it up, you can pull it out, and you can see the Z fold there. So nice and tightly compressed, or packed, sorry, and it's just gonna easily pull out when we start to feed it into that wound. Same principles apply. We put it on the edge of our finger and replacing one finger with the other one, making our way back from that wound, making sure all that pressure is directed to where that bleed is coming from. Once you're happy, you've filled that space up, right? We keep working our way back, back, back to make sure that whole wound is nice and tightly packed to make sure that bandage isn't gonna shift or move anywhere else in that wound causing that clot to dislodge. When it comes to your cellox, again, exactly the same principle as the, uh, the quick clot. It's gonna be in a Z fold, hemostatic agent. Exact nothing changes when we start to pack that wound. There was a few, um, I guess, issues with some previous hemostatic agents. Uh, the biggest one being people being allergic to shellfish. Now the Chitazan, all right, it does have a bit of shellfish in it. Sorry, shellfish, yeah. Um, it doesn't cause any heat, okay? And there hasn't been any known cases of adverse or allergic reactions to it. So compared to what was used previously, where we would pour it in, things would start to heat, or you'd put that pad into the wound and things would start to heat up and get very uncomfortable for your patient. The quick clot, as well as your cellox, is very, very safe to use. Uh, and there hasn't been any known adverse reactions or the patient complaining that that wound is starting to heat up. We've looked at where to pack in the body, how to pack, make sure we're doing it properly. The last thing we just want to touch on are areas that we don't really want to pack in the body. Some of the common areas that we avoid packing is going to be in the abdomen and also into the chest cavity. Uh, now the main reason we're not doing it there is because there are large cavity cavities, sorry, and there's nothing to push up against. Okay, so obviously in your groin, in your armpit, there's a lot of tissue, there's a lot of muscle, okay? Um, potentially maybe bone as well, um, but we can fill that space and it can stay nice and tight and compact. With your abdomen and with your chest cavity, large, large areas that if we start to pack, there's nothing to push up against and it's just gonna keep feeding in and feeding in and feeding in. And you're gonna be able to fit a lot of bandages into that area. And we're not actually gonna be putting any pressure on where that bleed is coming from. All right, so just making sure we don't pack into the abdomen and we don't pack into the chest cavity. All right, those will be covered off in a different lesson and we'll touch on how to manage injuries around that area, all right, in the chest as well as the abdomen.